I teach a monthly class here at the synagogue for seventh grade boys. Primarily, <laughs> you giggle, <laughs> primarily utilizing Moving Tradition's Shevet curriculum, we explore masculinity and what it means to be a mensch. Together, we discuss Jewish values, values of friendship and wisdom and strength and competition through the lens of pop culture and our ancient Jewish sources. Most importantly, though, we create safe space for each student to wrestle with Jewish tradition and to connect with one another. We watch videos, and we play games, and we debate, and we debate, and we debate, and we debate. We often speak about their journeys to becoming B'nai Mitzvah, a milestone most will celebrate during the year that we are together. And since some come directly from appointments with their B'nai Mitzvah tutors, it's not uncommon for students to enter the classroom humming their Torah portion. A funny thing happened last week when two boys, both so excited to show the other that they can chant their Torah portion from memory, realized that the first ver verses of both of their portions was exactly the same. Almost in harmony, they sang Vita Bear Adonai El Moshe Le Mor. Pick your favorite trope, whatever's going through your head. And they were surprised to hear their friend chant the very same words. Well, realizing the opportunity for an important teachable moment here, we spent some time discussing how that verse is used so often in Torah, often followed by the Hebrew verbs amor, speak, or daber, say. <coughs> Not this week, though. This week, we read Parashat Tzav, the second in the book of Leviticus. Like many other readings, the portion begins, Vaidaber Adonai El Moshe Lemor. The Eternal One spoke to Moses, saying, But then, you ready for this? But then, unlike other portions, this week's portion continues, Tzav command Aaron and his sons thus about the sacrificial rites. Unlike the more common speak or say found in other portions, here the word command is so much stronger. In fact, in his commentary on Leviticus 6, the medieval Torah commentator Rashi teaches the expression command, tzav, always implies urging, also implying that it comes into force at once and is binding on every generation afterwards. So if you've ever taught middle school or have a teenager of your own, you know it's there with the very first significant word of this week's Torah portion Sav, or command, that I lose most of my seventh grade students. In truth, the concept of obligation is complicated for many progressive Jews, both adolescents and their adult parents and even grandparents. Even more so when what follows those opening words is a litany of instructions to Aaron and his sons, the priests, regarding sacrifices, rituals that ceased so long ago with the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem in the year 70. How then should we read this week's Torah portion today? Perhaps we have a lot to learn from my dubious seventh graders who are so quick to challenge the person's relevance and eager to debate the significance or perhaps insignificance in their lives. <coughs> A cursory reading of the pshat, the text's simple meaning, is not enough. 
Rather, we must all ask tough questions and wrestle with the nuance, seeking ways to embody Torah's teachings. In his new curriculum, Ten Paths to God, renowned scholar Rabbi Lord Jonathan Sachs teaches, Judaism's genius was to take a high ideal and translate them into life by simple daily deeds, the way of mitzvot, acting in accordance with God's will. We don't just contemplate truth. We as Jews live it. The Hebrew Bible's prophetic writings, too, encourage its readers to lean into tradition so that ritual serves our higher spiritual aspirations. For example, while this week's Torah portion emphasizes the centrality of the sacrificial rite in ancient Jewish life, in the Haftarah portion, Jeremiah rebukes the people for sacrificing in God's name lifting up instead the prophetic call for justice above all. Even more poignant is the message we hear on Yom Kippur, a day on which many of us deny ourselves of food and drink. But the day's Haftarah reading asks, is this the fast I desire? Suggesting, of course, that there is more. Isaiah answers his own question. No, this is the fast I desire, he says. God demands that we unlock fetters of wickedness and untie the cords of the yoke to let the oppressed go free. Our mission, says Isaiah, is not simply to starve ourselves, as one might glean from a basic understanding of tradition, but to fulfill our greater obligation to honor all of God's creation. In doing so, seek repentance and return to the divine. On the surface, there appears to be some tension between what is written and deeper pursuits incumbent on all Jewish adults. What is certain is that we are left holding both preservers of a millennia-old tradition with its many commandments, and the prophetic call to live purposeful lives of meaning and service to others and to the world. Perhaps the former leads to the latter. Rabbi Sachs continues in his teachings on the importance of moving beyond contemplating tradition to living as God demands of each of us. Sex teaches, we don't contemplate creation by studying theoretical physics. We live it by making a blessing over what we eat and drink, acknowledging God as the creator of all we enjoy. We don't think about our responsibility for the environment. We keep Shabbat, setting a limit one day in seven to the exploitation of the world. We don't just study Jewish history. On the fasts and festivals, we reenact it. Truth becomes real when it becomes deed. That is how we transform the world. And that is precisely my hope for each of my seventh graders as they journey to B'nai Mitzvah, B'nai Mitzvah, obligated in observance and eligible to participate in specific Jewish ritual. In truth, that's my prayer for us all, me included. May we all continue to wrestle with Jewish tradition, asking important questions and exploring opportunities to embody the mitzvot, holding both the most complicated, seemingly antiquated texts, like the rituals offered us in this week's Torah portion, as well as the more feasible traditions found elsewhere. In doing so, we indeed transform the world and climb even higher in our own journey for connection and for meaning. Kenya Hiratzon, may that be God's will 